Hey guys, it's Sarah. I wanted to make a video that gave a little bit of context. Most of my videos are just day-to-day -day encounters, so there's not a lot of staging or setup that goes into them. And while I do try to provide some context in the description, people don't always read that, and it's hard to get the full story in just a couple of paragraphs. I posted my first video in April 2013 on YouTube, which is Wiley crying over grandma. I put it onto my Facebook page, and I got so many requests from friends to make it public that I decided to just put it out on YouTube and get it done with. It has since been viewed over 8 million times, which is incredible, and is a really beautiful, lasting legacy for my grandma, who touched so many lives, both during her life and after. Someone really kind early on showed me how to monetize my videos, and the money that I've earned from YouTube has allowed me to work and stay at the Wolf Sanctuary without having to demand a paycheck, which is huge. That means that your views and likes have directly contributed to saving wolves and wolf dogs. There's no way for me to say thank you enough for that. I'm forever in your debt, and I'm forever grateful. I wanted to tell a little bit about my personal story. But about eight years ago, my cousins opened up a sanctuary. A year prior, I had been raped and diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. When the sanctuary opened, I was struggling to make it through each day. PTSD for me was reliving the worst moment of my life. I didn't just remember it. I lived it. I felt it. I experienced it every single day. It manifested as panic attacks and night terrors and also the need to control aspects of my life. The easiest thing for me to control was food. I've always had a phobia of vomiting, but after I was attacked, it became overwhelming. I stopped eating certain foods that I felt could make me sick, and I stopped going out to restaurants where I hadn't been directly involved in creating the food. I wouldn't go any place where I felt that I might be trapped if I felt sick, which was basically everywhere. My weight dropped dramatically, and eventually I ended up being diagnosed with anorexia, put on medication, and required to go to weekly therapy and weight check-ins. That was my life when the sanctuary opened. I was struggling, I was in pain, and I was scared. And yet, when I walked into the enclosure with the wolf, it all melted away. Outside the enclosure, there were a million threats, both real and imagined. But in the enclosure, I only had to focus on one, a wolf. Wolves are beautiful, strong, big animals, and when you're with them for the first time, it's breathtaking. And yet, as I watched this wolf, I realized he wasn't some mythical, invincible creature. He was hurting, just like I was. He had been rescued from living on a six-foot chain for his entire life, abused and neglected as part of a roadside zoo. He looked at me with the same distrust, distaste, and fear that I did with the rest of the world. In that moment, I decided I'd help him heal. By modeling compassion for the wolf, I was able to recognize that I too deserve that same level of patience, respect, and love. I began working with him every day, as frequently as I could, to gain his trust and to help him learn that not all people were bad. The day that I felt he had fully healed was a big test for me. Wolves and wolf dogs will greet other wolves and people that they really love by kissing them in their mouth and on their face. Everything in my history says I should not let that happen. Wolves eat raw meat and yet here i was with a wolf coming at me getting ready to kiss me with a mouth full of germs there was no way that i was going to turn away this animal that i had just worked so hard to gain his trust instead of shunning him i allowed him to kiss me and later that day when i was scared to take a bite of food i remembered that i had just been kissed by a wolf i hadn't gotten sick and i was okay it was a big breakthrough in terms of my anorexia and it allowed me to start healing. I am now constantly covered in wolf kisses and I'm still not sick, so there we go. In September 2013, the sanctuary owners were asked to take over a failing sanctuary on the East Coast. My boyfriend at the time, who's now my amazing fiance, Matt, went out as a volunteer. He's about the hardest worker you've ever met and they quickly realized that. So what was supposed to be a two week volunteer trip ended up being a nine month job. After a while, we realized that we weren't gonna spend our lives apart from each other. So he eventually quit and came back to California. The sanctuary worked to find someone to replace him, but they weren't able to. So eventually they allowed us to both come back together so long as we provided a house to live in. Matt returned to the sanctuary to start working to save up money. And I started working three jobs. And soon with the help of our family, we were able to buy a 200 square foot house. In October 2014, we left to start our life at the sanctuary. I imagined I'd be able to get a job while I was out there. I'm a pharmacy technician and it's not a job that's hard to find, but I didn't realize how isolated we were going to be. It was 45 minutes to the nearest town, dangerously cold conditions. The road into the sanctuary was a mile and a half long unpaved, up a mountain and down into a valley. And our car didn't have four wheel drive. 
So as soon as it started raining or snowing, we were pretty much trapped. Matt and I decided that we would live as frugally as possible for as long as possible and use up our savings because this was really a once in a lifetime opportunity. There were 50 animals at the sanctuary, ranging from pure wolves and coyotes down to just dogs. Most of them had had very limited human interaction. The owner of the sanctuary prior to us arriving there had been an elderly man who did his best to provide for them, but physically wasn't able to provide the type of socialization that they needed day to day. Many of them were scared and fearful of humans and didn't want anything to do with me. Because I wasn't paid, I was able to spend each day hanging out with the wolves while Matt worked. I started working to gain their trust and animals that had previously been too scared to even come around when they smelled a human started running up to greet me at the fence. Some of the animals didn't ever come around and that was really hard to accept, but we did see marked decrease in their anxiety around people and that was a triumph for us. In April of last year, we ultimately had to make the decision to leave. Our savings had run out and there was no way that we could continue. Leaving the animals was the hardest decision I've ever had to make and I miss them every day. They're still in the care of the sanctuary. After leaving the sanctuary, I began having panic attacks and night terrors again, and Matt and I both realized that we're happiest when we're with the animals. So, we've decided that we're gonna open our own sanctuary that's focused on mental health recovery, specifically post-traumatic stress disorder recovery. We're currently in the process of looking for properties and registering as a nonprofit. YouTube will be a part of our sanctuary model with daily live streams and weekly vlogs. Until then, I will use content that I have from the sanctuary as well as curated content such as question and answers, education, and progress reports on our sanctuary. YouTube revenue is vital to bolstering our sanctuary and rescue efforts, so please continue to stick around. Your likes, views, and subscriptions all help directly in saving animals. Please be sure to share this with all your friends. You never know who's hurting and who will find hope in a story of unconventional recovery. It can be so hard to remember that you're not alone and that you can get better. And we wanna make sure that everyone knows that there will be an opportunity to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and thanks for being there for the wolves. Have a great day.